Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hi, hello. I'm doing that thing where I film the intro after I've already read these books. So today's video is going to be a reading vlog and I'm reading four like classic horror books that probably everyone has read but me. And they all have movies that um, of course I am very familiar with and love, but I never read the books because, you know, I just started reading horror a couple months ago. But I have seen these movies a thousand times, you know, I've been watching horror movies since I was like a fetus, just haven't read the books yet until now. It's all gonna change in today's video. <laughs> so in this video, I will be reading The Exorcist by William Peter Blady, of course. The movie The Exorcist, I'm sure you are familiar with. Um, and this is the book that the movie is based off of. And then I'm also going to be reading Psycho by Robert Blotch, which of course, the movie Psycho uh, by Alfred Hitchcock. That movie is based off of this book, another oldie but goodie. And then I have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley with the gorgeous cover. This was written in 1818 and stay tuned for my thoughts on that one. <laughs> and then I have Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin, of course the iconic movie Rosemary's Baby, one of my all-time faves finally got around to reading the book. Um, so yeah, just some like old classic horror books we're gonna be reading and talking about and I can't wait to share my thoughts with you. So yeah, I'm going to let you guys watch the vlog and then I will be back to share my final thoughts with you and my final ranking. Good morning and happy October. I think it's technically September 30th today. Um, I started reading The Exorcist. I just wanted to put September away because I had like not the greatest reading month. Um, so yeah, I started The Exorcist this morning. Oh my God, there's a huge spider over there. And they always like go up on the ceiling and we can't reach them because we have like really high ceilings. Oh my god. <laughs> Good morning. Um, well, anyways, I started, I'm gonna keep looking at it now. I started The Exorcist this morning. Um, I got like 60 pages in and so far it's kind of boring. <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie, really nothing has happened other than it's like you know we have um obviously reagan the little girl she lives with her single mom chris and chris is an actress and they start hearing weird noises and sounds coming from the attic and she's like oh it's probably just rats or squirrels or whatever and obviously it's not so really that's all that's happened and it's taken 60 pages like it's just a lot of like rambling little side conversations that I'm like, okay, can we just stop? Like, can we just get on with the demons? You know what I'm saying? So like, it's okay so far, but it's just a little bit boring. So I don't know. That's my thoughts on that. Um, I have to work today and then after work, I'm gonna watch My Best Friend's Exorcism, the movie, I'm so excited. And then tomorrow is Saturday, tomorrow's like a big cleaning day. And then, um, I don't know, we might go to the movies or something, we might see that movie Smile that just came out to get tomato cages because I'm gonna be making little DIY ghosts. So I have some like Halloween DIY projects <laughs> that I might be doing. Good morning! So it is Monday morning. 
shouldn't be that excited about a Monday morning. I just don't feel like working, you know? I just want to lay here and read. But um, over the weekend, well, technically this morning, I finished reading The Exorcist and it was okay. Like, I don't see the hype where everyone's giving this five stars and like raving about it and saying it's like the best book ever written. Is it the most terrifying novel ever written? No. Was this the most terrifying novel ever written as of 1971? I don't know, maybe. It was good. It wasn't bad. Um, it was just a lot of it was a little bit boring. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It's very slow and boring and some of it gets very clinical. Like, there's a lot of detail. I say, as a fan of the movie, Belle is shaking the tripod again. Yeah, as a fan of the movie, this goes in much more detail and depth and, um, I don't know, explains a lot more. You get a lot more of, like, the backstory and explanations for things. There's a lot more character development. Like, you're just getting the movie in more depth, if that makes sense. I mean, I liked it. I respect its place in history, um, you know, in the horror history, but at the same time, I did find parts of it to be just a little bit boring. And it's like something super interesting would happen or they would be discussing something interesting and then it would just get boring and then it would get interesting and then it would get boring. And um, oh my God, the exorcism scenes with um, the audio. So I was like also listening to the audiobook. Oh my God, the man doing the voice of Reagan. Hilarious. Um, I loved it. <laughs> if you are going to read this book, I recommend listening to the audio for at least like the exorcism parts because it's wild. But yeah, overall, I think I'm going to go with a 3.5 for my reading experience. And um, I think I'm going to round it up to a four on Goodreads because like it is good. I do recommend it. If you're a fan of the movie, you should read the book. But you know, it's just like, I don't know. It reads like a typical old horror book. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't have much else to say about this one. Um, Guys, I'm like going to cry. Excuse my stupid dryer in the background. Um, oh my gosh, and my cat's butt. Uh, my friend Megan on Instagram, we both have endometriosis. We came, We became good friends online and she sent me a birthday present. She sent me this book. Um, it's about a girl that has a chronic illness. I've been super excited to read this one. Yeah, it says her young body collapses in invisible pain. She's desperate for answers. And it's just kind of like her navigating life with a chronic illness. I heard it's really like accurate with their representation. And then she also wrote me a card with this little like personalized um letter which i love i literally cried like uh, that it's just so sweet and then she also got me a barnes and noble gift card thank you so much megan i am like obsessed i am beyond grateful like when people do little stuff like this for me it like literally means the world to me so thank you so much yeah my birthday is october 26th you're either going to be watching this video the week before or on my actual birthday i can't decide yet what's going up first but yeah thank you so much okay hi so it's tuesday night i just made my little ghosties out of the tomato cages um as you can see you'll probably see a clip of me making them i had to like rig the shit out of these tomato cages because i got these like really flimsy little tomato cages because it's like all that I could find in October. So I had to like stack them on top of each other and they're kind of a mess, but it worked and they look so cute in the living room. I'm obsessed. Anyways, um, I'm actually in the middle of reading both of these books, Psycho and Frankenstein. Um, I've been physically reading Psycho and then I had some time at work today to start the audio for Frankenstein. So let's go over this first. So I got 
um, 73 pages in. It's actually pretty short, like it's only 255 pages. So I don't know if you need me to tell the story of Frankenstein to you, but Victor Frankenstein, of course, has this like, he's the scientist and he wants to like, basically play God. And so he creates this human and he wants to, you know, study like life and death and so he makes this human of course which turns out to be the monster who's now kind of like stalking him around his like laboratory and basically this whole experiment went horribly wrong and you know what like I like the story of Frankenstein you know what I mean but the writing this was written in 1818 so it's that old English jargon and it's so fucking boring. Like I hate reading old writing like this, which is like what I was afraid of going into this book. Like I want to read it because, you know, it's a classic and I do enjoy the story, but I'm like, holy shit, this writing is so fucking boring. And half the time I like don't even understand what he's saying. I'm like, because it's like, to me, like it's not real English. To me, who is like an actual moron, I can't comprehend 1818 English. But, you know, like, it's not totally incomprehensible. Is that even a fucking word? <sighs> I'm like the queen of making up words on this channel. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can still comprehend what's going on. The writing's just fucking boring. So, like, I don't even know what to say about this one. Like, it's good. I just wish it wasn't written in 1818, but like, what are you gonna do? That's what you get when you read a classic, you know what I'm saying? This one, uh, Psycho, I am 77 pages in, and this was written in 1959. I'm obsessed so far, you guys. I mean, do you all know the story of Psycho? About the Bates Motel, where Norman Bates is running this motel with his mother <laughs> and uh you know the infamous shower scene do i even need to explain um of course you know obsessed with the movie obsessed with bates motel the show and now i'm finally reading this book and i am fucking obsessed like knowing what i know obviously like i know what the twist is in this book obviously like i know what's going to happen and what is happening and normally it would like totally spoil it for me because if I wouldn't have known that going in I would be like really shocked at what's to come I think but knowing what I know I think makes it even more creepy because I'm like oh my god this dude is fucking psycho you know what I'm saying um but yeah I'm obsessed with this so far. It reads so easy. Like it doesn't feel like it was written in 1959. You know, like even The Exorcist, which was written after this book, felt a little bit like old, boring <laughs> language. But this, like, it's reading so smoothly. I'm obsessed. It's so creepy. I, I just absolutely love it so far. You know what? From now on, I, I always get comments on my videos like, oh, I hated that book, or oh, that book didn't work for me, and those are always the books that I love, and then people comment on my videos, and they're like, oh, that's like the best book ever written, and those are always like the books that I hate, so maybe I should just take like opposite advice from you guys. <laughs> One of you guys commented on my TBR video, can't remember who it was, but you said that Psycho didn't work for you. This is my favorite book of this vlog so far. And then a bunch of people told me that Frankenstein is like their favorite book. And like, it's good, don't get me wrong. I just can't, I don't have the brain for like 1800s language. But I mean, I do really enjoy the story. It is good. It's not bad. I'm, it's just my brain, you know? Anyways.
And then this guy's also a little DIY moment. I took this craft pumpkin from Michael's and cut the top off and then I stuffed like a washcloth in there because it was a little bit too like wide um and then I just put in this eucalyptus fall floral from Michaels I got this idea off of Instagram as well as the ghosts um so I'm not taking credit but I've been seeing like stuff like this floating around on my Instagram feed so yeah I just thought both of these are just super cute and easy and I'm obsessed Please forgive the quality. I don't feel like getting up to get my camera. I'm on my lunch break. And honestly, like, how do I still have 160 pages of this old fucking nonsense? <laughs> like, I just absolutely hate the fucking writing. Listen, I, I don't know how so many people are recommending this book and saying how great it is. Like, yeah, it's good. But like, seriously, Y'all are sitting around reading this 1818 ancient fucking writing. Like, let me get this straight. You're all sitting around and reading this for fun. I don't fucking understand. Maybe I'm just stupid. Like, I'm low-key dumb. But, like, I didn't think I was this dumb. But maybe I am. <laughs> I just cannot. Like, my pea-sized brain just cannot comprehend this old English jargon. I'm literally looking up cliff notes as we speak. I'm just, uh, I literally want to take like an ice pick and just put into my fucking skull. Um, that's how I feel. Never, ever, ever will read an 1800s book ever again. The story is good though. Like obviously, oh my God, I have a headache after beating myself ah like obviously the story of frankenstein is good like it's a good story but it's just too old for me i can't stand it it's putting me like it's literally i'm gonna cry oh so, can you see me if i talk to you in the mirror maybe i'm getting ready i had this bright idea that i was going to talk to you while i'm getting ready um it's actually friday i'm off work today but I have to go to physical therapy and I work all day tomorrow. So I took off today because I'm like so fucking tired of never having days off. I work almost every single Saturday. So I like never have time for myself. So yeah. Anyways, I have to go to physical therapy and then I have to, I'm going to go, um, see my dad for a little while. Belle, oh my god, the second I get the tripod out, Belle is like all about that shit. <laughs> She's just like obsessed. I don't I don't know what the big deal is. But um anyways, hopefully the camera's not shaking too much. Belly, come on. You guys even see me? I swear if I look back and this is all out of focus, I'm gonna like literally cry. I look like I belong on TikTok. Um, so anyways, let's talk books, shall we? I don't know. I've been in like a massive reading slump. I just don't feel like reading. I've been exercising at like six in the morning. Usually I would like wake up and read and now I've been waking up and working out and I love it. I really want to get back into like consistently working out but it's hard because every time I work out for like a week then like you know I get a pain flare up and then I don't work out for a while so it's so hard like having a chronic illness and trying to like set a workout routine but um, I finished reading Frankenstein I listened to it on audio mostly and guys that fucking boring 1818 writing I just I couldn't stand it um I did like the story so I think I'm gonna go with three stars I just I will never read another old ass book ever again like that's it <laughs> I'm not a classics girly I just don't care 
but since the story was good, I'm going with three stars. I like it. I would recommend it. I respect its place in history. I just don't want to read that boring ass literature ever again. <laughs> so yeah, that's my review on that. Um, woo. Last weekend, we saw the movie Smile in theaters and it was so good. If you're looking for like a good creepy movie, I highly recommend you go see Smile. Um, what else? I've been trying to slowly make my way through the Halloween movies, you know, like re-watching them all because Halloween Ends is coming out soon, like next week. Um, so I'd really like to see that. I think I'm going to take my dad to go see that. Um, and then what else? What else? I watched Hocus Pocus 2. That was like not very good. And then I watched My Best Friend's Exorcism. Also not very good. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. I'm currently trying to finish up reading Psycho. And then I'm going to, well, I actually just started the audiobook for Rosemary's Baby. Um, yeah. It just sucks. I feel like I just don't want to read, but yet this is the month that I like want to read all my spooky books, you know? And I'm like, nope, my brain just will not settle down. My ADHD is really bad. I probably need to be medicated at this. So it's later in the day. It's a Friday night and I just finished reading Psycho. I'm filming on Bell's cat tower <laughs> and uh on my phone so I'm sorry for like the audio and stuff but I just finished Psycho I loved this book you guys I'm going with five stars I thought it was just short creepy I loved it I mean it's not like I don't know it's not like a masterpiece or anything but I'm still giving it five stars because I just think it's just the perfect like psychological creepy horror book and I'm a little bit biased because this was like the first horror movie I think I've ever watched as a child. Um, I think this was the first one that my dad uh, let me watch <laughs> and I just remember really loving this movie and to finally read the book that the movie is based on it's just it's just it has a special place in my heart like it's just a moment of nostalgia for me and I really really enjoyed this also the freaking show Bates Motel I'm obsessed with highly recommend reading this book then watching the movie then watching that show if you haven't already if this hasn't been spoiled for you I think you're gonna like find this to be a little wild at the end but I mean I feel like most people probably know what the twists are and stuff so even still going in and knowing what happens um I was still obsessed love it um and I just started reading Rosemary's Baby I got 70 pages in Belle hello excuse me girlfriend girlfriend Ah! Um, I just got 70 pages in. Super quick read. Um, it's like 250 pages, but there's like not a lot of words on the pages. I started the audio when I was getting ready this morning and I got 70 pages in. So far, it's literally spot on. There's a hair in my mouth. Spot on identical to the movie, which is one of my all time faves. So this one is also like really close to the movie and also the actual show Bates Motel but yeah this one dead on it's exactly like the movie so far you know Rosemary and her husband Guy they find this like perfect apartment they move in they're meeting the neighbors and the one neighbor and her husband it's like this old couple and they're a little bit fucking weird so if you know you know Oh my god, Val, I cannot deal with you right now. <laughs> if you know, you know, and I'm obsessed. I really, really, really love this one so far. So 
I feel like these are two hits of this vlog and the other books were just okay so far. <laughs> should probably burn this shirt because I feel like everyone in my life is about to kill themselves after last night. Um, let me back you up here. Yeah, um, I guess if you don't follow baseball, the Mets lost last night and got kicked out of the playoffs. So like, if you know me, like everyone in my life is obsessed with the Mets, like my dad and my boyfriend, oh my God, my dad especially, like I'm worried about my dad. Cause like his entire life is Mets baseball and like they've always sucked. <laughs> and now it's like, they were really good this year. They were the best team. And of course, now they suck. <laughs> so yeah, um, I feel like I should burn this shirt because I thought it was a lucky shirt because I, I wore it the other night and they won. So I was like, oh, well if I wore it like last night, maybe they would win. <laughs> Ooh, I was wrong. But anyway, <laughs> hello, it's Monday morning. Um, over the weekend, I worked on Saturday and then, um, what did we do Saturday night? Oh, we stayed up till like one o'clock in the morning watching the Mets. Um, and then last night, oh, yesterday we went organic apple picking. So I found this farm that um, does organic apples because, you know, like I don't eat, I usually try not to eat fruits and vegetables that aren't organic because of all the research with it contributing to endometriosis. And just in general, like it's really bad for your hormones. There's just so many studies on non-organic produce that it's like so harmful and me being a health freak, um, <laughs> I went and found an organic apple picking farm. So we went there yesterday, it was really nice, but it was so difficult because 90% of the apples were rotten or like eaten by insects or animals because they weren't like sprayed with pesticides. So all the animals have been eating them and you know, like organic produce goes rotten quicker. So everything that we picked was like rotten, rotten, rotten. So we did find, I think we picked 20 apples um, and I got some cider. So yeah, that was fun. So I brought all of those home. I am definitely not a farm girl. They gave us these long, what are they? Oh man, my light just died. I didn't even know the battery was dying. Anyways, they gave us these like long things. They're like apple pickers. I don't know what they're called, but you use them to like, they're like the apples are really high up in these trees and you have to use it to get the apples down. I couldn't get a single one. I could not pick any because I couldn't use the thing and then the leaves are like falling in your eyes. I was like, okay, I'm not a farm girl. I'm like Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie on The Simple Life. That was me at the farm yesterday. But anyways, Justin had to pick all the apples while I just stood there and held a little basket. <laughs> so yeah. Um, anyways, I finished Rosemary's Baby this morning. Um, I am biased again because this is one of my favorite horror movies like ever. I just, I love it. And so I am going with five stars. This is pretty much spot on to the movie. So it's like identical. So of course, you know, if you love the movie, you're going to love the book and vice versa. Um, yeah, I just absolutely love this one with the, the weird neighbor vibes. I like don't even want to say anything because if you don't know what this book is about or what the movie's about, I don't want to say anything that will spoil it. I think it's best to go in blind because if I tell you like what the theme is or what you're gonna suspect things along the way and you're gonna figure it out. I mean, you probably can figure it out <laughs> with like the little clues here and there, but I just think it's more fun to go into this one blind. I just absolutely 
love this story so much um, and yeah and it's not like super like graphic or scary or anything it's just like weird and creepy and like what the fuck it's very much what the fuck vibes <laughs> and I just love it so much um, yeah definitely a favorite of mine um, I might read I Am Legend for this vlog. I don't know if I want to end the vlog here or if I want to read one more book. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm doing anything else that's fun this month. I want to go see Halloween ends, definitely. Um, I know I'm having, like every year we have like a little mini birthday party slash Halloween party. For myself so I think only like five people are coming if that like it's always very small because I don't have friends I have like very few friends and I have massive social anxiety so I don't like tons of people coming over or like hanging out or anything so I'm like just invite like the bare minimum and that's that uh, so yeah I might do that I don't know or maybe I'll start another vlog I don't know I might start another vlog and then put it up like the very end of October I don't know maybe we'll do that we'll see I will be back to give you like a final wrap up okay. I'm back just filmed the intro now I'm filming the outro in one sitting here and um, I don't know hopefully my hair looks okay I mean do I ever look okay in my vlogs no the answer is no I also am sick right now there's something going on with my stomach I don't know if it's a stomach bug if it's endometriosis what the fuck is going on I thought it was food moist poisoning everyone else ate the same food as me everyone's fine I'm not fine I've been sick for three days I've been having like stomach trouble <laughs> If you've watched the new um, Nick Kroll comedy special on Netflix, you know. If you know, you know the joke that I just made. But anyways, I'm going to rank these four books and let you know my final thoughts here. So, um, obviously in fourth place, my least favorite out of these four, I think, was Frankenstein. I don't know. I'm sure people are going to drag me. I had someone tell me that I'm not a real horror fan because I haven't read the classics. So since I fucking read an 1800s book, am I finally a horror fan now? Answer the question. <laughs> Coming in at third place was The Exorcist. Um, I liked it, but once again, the horror community is going to shoot me. I think I prefer the movie better than the book because this was just a little bit like it just got a little slow and boring in parts of it. And I don't know. And the whole like aspect of religion and I don't know, it was just a little bit too much. Like it was just dragging a little bit. And some parts of it, I feel like I don't know. I feel like this would have worked better as a novella, in my opinion. It's like, yes, it is more detailed than the movie. Like, it's a good read if you love the movie, but like, I don't know. It's not like as good, or I don't think it's as good as like everyone else seems to think it is. I think it's good. I recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the movie. It's a good read, but I don't, I don't know. I'm one of the very few people that prefer the movie better, I think. So that one, so okay, Frankenstein's a three star, The Exorcist was a 3.5, then we have my two five star reads. I can't believe I have two five star reads in this vlog, that's awesome. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know, I don't even know how to rank these. I love both of them. I don't know, I guess in second place I'm gonna put Psycho by Robert Blotch. I just, I don't know. I love the movie, love the show, and of course love this book. And I just love that it was just a short, easy read, quick novella. It's psychological horror, it's creepy, and I really enjoyed it. 
And then a number one, I think my favorite was of course Rosemary's Baby. This one is very, very similar to the movie. There's only like a few minor things that I found that are different than the movie. I don't wanna say anything about it. It's best to go in blind if you don't know anything about it. I mean, I feel like you might be living under a rock if you don't, but that's okay because then you can go in blind and appreciate this. But um, yeah, so yeah, that is my final, my final thoughts, my wrap up for these books. And I will be filming a second vlog this month at the end of October. It's probably gonna go up like November 1st. Um, but I will be reading Slewfoot and a couple other books in that one because you guys told me on Instagram to vlog Slewfoot. So I'm making it happen, okay? And uh, yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye!